Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. In this episode, we are continuing our coverage of the uh, ongoing crisis between uh, Ukraine, Russia, and the West. And we'll start with the, uh, the news headlines today in terms of what's going on within the region. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, Ukrainian ambassador, nobody safe if Russia invades. And that's the hill. Uh, Al Jazeera, Putin no longer fears a democratic Ukraine. Uh, Fox News, John Kirby sounds the alarm. A Russian invasion of Ukraine could happen at any time. Uh, the Guardian, U.S. Senate panel uh, close to approving mother of all sanctions against Russia. Mother of all sanctions. That's pretty freaking original. Uh, BNN Bloomberg, Lavrov suggests Russia will wait longer before Ukraine response. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kiev calls on Russia to pull back t uh, troops. And uh, AnnieNews.in. And, and you know what's interesting? This there was another article that was that was pulled for some reason. It kind of kind of disappeared. Uh, and this is uh, Canadian troops in Ukraine relocated west of the Dnieper River for safety reasons. Minister, and I guess that's the uh, the defense minister of Canada. Now that's an that's an interesting topic that that I can't resist uh, not talking about real real quick. Has anybody looked uh, at the uh, the defense minister of Canada? The defense minister of Canada. Anybody know her name? Anita. What is it? Anita Anand. I believe that's that's her her name. Yeah, that is her name. Uh, very very interesting pick for a defense minister, uh, considering uh, she is a, a a a hardcore leftist progressive out of a out of academia, out of Canadian academia. She's a she taught law, and now she's the Minister of Defense in Canada. And her primary goal as Canadian Defense Minister is culture change and to combat sexual misconduct in the Canadian Armed Forces. That's her, that's her primary goal in life. So how does this happen? How, how do you, as a Canadian citizen, how are you okay with this as a Defense Minister? I mean, I could I could see probably uh, minister of of of, of women's studies, or, or or minister of transgender studies, or something like that. Great fit for her, but really, you're going to put her in as the defense minister? You guys are stupid. I'm sorry, I take that back. <laughs> I just it just blows my mind sometimes. So, and this is the person who's uh, now kind of calling the shots, uh, possibly. On what the Canadian Armed Forces are are, are doing in uh, in Ukraine. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off topic here. But uh, again, the uh, the the uh, the rhetoric and and just what is happening in the region it just continues to to escalate, and uh, we continue to see the deployment of these Russian forces and and uh, for all intents and purposes, everything coming out of U.S. media right now. Uh, be it CNN, Fox News, all of them, uh, really kind of are marching in tandem in terms of uh, uh, of uh, reporting this this massive deployment of Russian forces and that that it could uh, it could act at at any moment. That's kind of you know what we're hearing right now here in, in the uh, the uh, the uh, semi United States, <laughs> um, but. Uh, I uh, again, it, very very difficult to say. I would say that um, that in all probability, uh, what we're hearing and what we're seeing is not simply uh, if this is not a wag the dog scenario. If we eliminate the wag the dog scenario, and this is and this is actually real, 
which it could very well be. If that's the case, then uh, it's not just the buildup of Russian forces that have Western intel concern. Western intel has heard something that leads them to believe that uh, a possible Russian operation is, uh, is getting close to being launched. And uh, that, that could be, again, uh, uh, signals, intercepts, that could be both signal intercepts, that could be, that could be human. Uh, it could be a, a wide a range of intelligence sources that, that may uh, all point to the, to the, in the same direction in terms of what we're possibly seeing. But I think uh, outside of just the Russian military buildup, it, it would not have been something that has created uh, this level of concern. And we're seeing that coming out of both uh, British intelligence, U.S. intelligence, um, not so much German intelligence, <laughs> German intelligence. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 again, it's probably not so much seeing the buildup. The buildup is part of it, but obviously uh, they've heard something. And that something indicates that um, that uh, the Kremlin has given authorization, quite possibly, to launch launch an operation. So um, that's kind of what we're looking at right now. And again, I, as I talked about before, uh, it's 50-50 uh, whether uh, it, it'll, it'll happen or not. Again, would not surprise me if nothing happens. Uh, that kind of changes the, the, the uh, dynamic as well because I, I doubt people would be paying uh, this much uh, attention to what's going on in the future. And that may be a goal. Who knows? Uh, and then again, it wouldn't surprise me if, if we, we do see uh, uh, a large-scale military operation in the Ukraine. But I, I don't think uh, the Russians are going to seize control of Ukraine in two days. I, th I think if it is a large-scale operation with the intent of taking everything east of the Dnieper River or uh, a, a decapitation strike where they're looking for some sort of regime change, um, it's going to be uh, either of those two scenarios where where large areas of uh, Ukraine are, are occupied. That is going to be a uh, a very very tough uh, nut to crack for the Russian armed forces. Uh, take a look at uh, at some of the uh, the videos, some of the the, the documentaries that uh, documented the 2014 Maidan in uh, made in in in, in Ukraine. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of in, individuals in Kiev and, and especially in, in Western Ukraine who uh, are not okay with the Russians. And uh, if you look at the blood, sweat, and tears of those folks were willing to spill to change that government in Kiev, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty intense. And yeah, you can say, ah, it was a George Soros operation. They were all paid. Look, you can't pay those kids uh, to, to do what they did in 2014, especially uh, when the, the bear cut snipers were, were, were shooting them and killing them all in the streets. And I mean, that was some pretty, pretty intense crap that happened there in, uh, in the streets of Kiev. And, and uh, no one's going to do that for a, uh, a very small amount of money. So obviously there's some deep, deep, deep reservations about the, the current uh, Russian-supported government prior to 2014, which caused this, uh, this, this popular uh, revolution in, in Kiev. But uh, if, you, if you harken back and you look at that, and you look at that gusto, and a, and a lot of those guys uh, ended up uh, joining some of these paramilitary units and you know, taking up arms and fighting the Russians in eastern Ukraine. So that's still definitely there, and uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough one for the Russians if they if they pull the trigger on this. It's it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be pretty, and then compounding that with uh, um, the, uh, the 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 Western support, uh, especially the. 
uh, the, the Brits with uh, all those uh, anti-tank systems, those in-laws that were were uh, were sent, and, and a host of other systems as well, are, are really right now are pouring into Ukraine to be used. Um, I, I think it's just going to be just just nasty and messy and and long, and uh, um, it's going to be tough. And I think Putin knows that, and uh, that's probably part of his calculus right now on, on why we haven't seen. A, uh, a recent operation but at the same time I think part of his calculus meaning Putin's is it's just going to get worse and at a, at a point it's going to become even much much more difficult to uh, conduct an operation and, and uh, uh, bring Ukraine back into the uh, into Moscow's fold so to speak so again uh, that's probably what he's weighing it's it's now or never and if it's never is the cost benefit analysis something that uh, it's going to endanger at some point uh, either his or even uh, his uh, his cohort up in Minsk, uh, the strong man in Belarus as well. So those are some things I think he's looking at. But um, we're also hearing uh, that uh, the Ukrainians are starting to reinforce uh, the area near uh, Crimea. Uh, they're They've uh, brought in some uh, some heavy uh, artillery tubes and uh, are putting them in place. Uh, you know, it's kind of strange also. We're not hearing much about any uh, defensive. Uh, they're being very, very quiet, uh, the Ukrainians are, in terms about about what they're deploying um, along the uh, uh, Belarusian and, and Russian borders up, up towards the north and these accesses of advance towards Kiev. Which is smart, and, and probably they they may be taking it seriously. But at the same time, uh, if they're if they're not deploying anything, that would be a probably a, a big mistake as well. So I, I would assume that uh, defensive preparations are being made by the Ukrainians, but um, uh, it, it, it by uh, outward appearances that doesn't appear at least to be the case. There doesn't appear to be a lot of activity by the Ukrainians in terms of what they're deploying uh, in terms of uh, uh, countermeasures to a possible Russian operation. But they, they could actually be doing it. We're just not saying it, and, which makes sense. They, they, they want to try to hide those force concentrations as best they can because the Russians are going to be able to, if they know where those forces are at, they're going to be able to hit them with the uh, with various systems, long-range cruise missiles and uh, airstrikes and such. But uh, that's the news for today coming out of here. We're, we're, we're watching it very, very closely. And um, I might have to do another independent story on on, uh, on Anita, the, uh, the Canadian defense minister. I'll see you guys later. Have a good day.